reply for 30 minutes. And I was like, oh shit, I've like really offended him by suggesting GeoGuessr. <laughs> then this guy comes back and says, sorry, my toilet broke. Yeah, not the kind of way you would expect either. And thank you to Rolf Soldat for the subscription. Uh, no, it was just running water. I went to gobble, go take a really gobble. fast shower and it was just like sitting there going, shh. I was like, this has been going for like two hours now, so mm. this could be a real problem. So I needed to gobble, fix that. Gobble. So I opened up the tank and I bent a bunch of stuff and I made it stop. So, you know, preventative measure till I can spend more time figuring it out. So, yeah, it's been a frantic few minutes, but we're here. I'm going to bend my tube in your tank. Doesn't really... It's not so much the tube, but it was more the, the plumb bob thing. What do you call it? The, oh, the I, floater? The, yeah, it's... um. Yeah, I know what you're I talking about. I had to, like, about. bent that thing. I bent that thing a little bit, and it stopped shooting water, so... I've had to do some uh, some toilet maintenance before <laughs> in my life as well, so... Uh, I, I know what you're talking about. It's a thing that sits on top of the water and is also, like, connected to, like, a thing that's a circle, and you gotta kind of... You might yeah. be right. It might be called a plumb bob. That seemed like the right thing to call it, in my mind. Well, I mean, that's why they're plumb bob millionaire. That's pretty good. <laughs> All right. Uh, what are we doing on today's docket? We're playing a little bit of uh, Binding of Isaac to start with. Maybe you've heard of this game. Apparently, there's an HD remake coming out, so we figured we might as well get familiar with it. Um, then, we're going to be playing a little bit of Seated Geo Guess. There's some cooperative. We're going to be both detectives on the case. Good cop, bad cop, figuring out where in the world is Carmen San Diego. And finally, a little bit of Cards Against Humanity. Rob and Bear are uh, already going to join us. Is that correct? That is correct. I also want to say Like a Mania and Fake Cum Salesman. Up down to the side, welcome to the Lion Pride. Shall we get started, Nick? Yeah, let's make a seed. All right, I'm gonna say we're gonna start with five one one. All right, I'm gonna go six two one zero. Six two one zero. All right, and I'm gonna play as Isaac today. Yeah, me too. Just to change to things up a little bit. All righty. How was your uh, Tuesday, Nick? How was your Monday night to Tuesday? You played a bunch of Evil Within. I saw. Oh, I don't, do you want to talk about that? <laughs> I would love to talk about The Evil Within because the response to this game... I'm going to pick this up, by the way. But the response to this game... I haven't played it, but it kind of surprised me. Because when the reviews came out, they were like, eh, it's okay. But when, like, the people played it, you know, when it got into the hands of the masses, the narrative all of a sudden becomes, well, this is real bad. So I want to like... be very careful about how I approach what I'm about to say because I really okay. don't want to get any kind of sweeping negative response because that's not what this is about. Ooh, what I want to say is thank you to Satamification for the subscription. That is very important, and thank you. Same to you to Hotter356. Uh, curse Room, I'm going in. Oh, so, oh, Guppy's Tail paid off. It's all right, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, so, yeah, so I played like three and a half, four hours, something like that, of this game. Okay. It took a very long time to set up, and I'm not blaming the game for this. This was a Steam infrastructure thing at first. Okay. Uh, the issue was it wouldn't, like, update and say, like, okay, the game can be unencrypted now and all of that stuff. So I had to sit there and wait for that to finish. Uh, then once it finished, it was, like, 1 o'clock. I started this at 12, and... Uh, from there, it was all about, now, how do I get this to play at the proper aspect ratio right. and unlock the frame rate from 30? And that took a while, too, and we had to change it, like, four or five times. There's these crazy-ass black bars, like, huge black bars. Not just regular letterboxing, but, like, they took up about two-thirds of the screen. So, uh, just as a, an aside there, apparently... Yeah. What I what I read at least is that that's like an artistic thing. It's not just like we don't know what's up with. I'm gonna take this pill. Oh really? Okay. It's not like we don't know what's up with PC gaming. It's like they wanted to emulate. Again, this might be like uh, revisionist history, but they're like we want to emulate like 70 millimeter film aspect ratio to kind of send that vibe. Whether you believe that or Weird. not, I suppose is a uh, a matter of your well, own opinion. I mean, that's cool, I guess, if they want to do that, but can I, like, have an option to opt out without having to put yes. in command lines? <laughs> that would be what I want. Uh, so, yeah, I figured that out. Apparently, changing the aspect ratio actually kind of sort of breaks the game a little bit because there's actually graphics that don't render properly when you change it. Uh, it was also really kind of chuggy on frame rate, which I have a pretty powerful setup, so I was a little surprised by that. Yeah. Uh, so I got into the game. I was being as optimistic as humanly possible. I really wanted to just give it every possible chance to just, you know, let it get through its weird introduction or whatever. And I was actually really enjoying the introduction until we got to one of those awkward horror stealth scenes, which seems to be just required in all things 
uh, where you need to hide in the locker for a while. Then there's right. a guy that's going to run around through the room and follow really obvious patrol paths, yet I still can't get by him because the stealth is arbitrary. Uh, but that aside, like I said, this isn't meant to be negative. It's just a weird introduction, and I figured things would open up from there. And it sort of turned into, like, a really hard combat-heavy Resident Evil 4, which I'm told now that I was supposed to have picked easy instead of normal. Yeah, that was so another weird thing. Maybe I did that wrong. Uh, and I'd also read some things from press that said, like, the Bethesda sent out some documents that were like, you should probably not play on normal. Yeah, yeah. Which I, is I real weird. It well. It's unusual, <laughs> for sure. It like kind of like they knew that there was something up with the balance, and there is something up with the balance in my opinion. Uh, I have to say thank you to Flobes for the subscription, and also thank you to Lando Strawberries for the subscription as well. And I had some donations, but I'll read those after a little bit. Sure. Uh, so yeah, I played through the first intro. We got past that. We then got into like the village section. There's a bunch of stealth and hiding and very, very infrequent ammo dispersal, Ooh, baby, which, you know, I kind of come to expect from survival horror. Uh, but what I didn't expect was just endless combat. I figured there'd be more going on than just, like, instantly we'd be in the midst of a ton of enemies. Uh, so, you know, preconceptions on my part. I can't say that I can blame the game for that, but I guess I got a different impression from all the marketing materials than what was actually available in the game. Uh, what did you kind of think about the marketing? Did you have the idea that it would be more like a Silent Hill than a Resident yes, Evil? Yes, um, but... I think that's because I'm kind of ignorant. I want to say Charles yeah, Oberon. Yeah, maybe me too, actually. Charles Oberon, thank you for the subscription. But yeah, I was under the impression that it was a little bit more Silent Hilly, but uh, I've basically played like none of those games. So I kind right. of also was of the opinion that my opinion is meaningless. And you know, it's a really dumb thing for me to have even said that, considering I freaking know who made the game and yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. So yeah, it was silly, and eventually I got to a point where it was just really, really hard, and then the game crashed, and I was like, alright, it's 5am, I think I'm about done with this. Uh, so my experiences were not that positive, unfortunately, but I kind of do want to go back to it and see if maybe I can still draw some other conclusions. Maybe as I get further in, things will open up in a different way. I'm really hoping that's the case anyway, and I've heard there's very imaginative environments and things, so I want to give it a chance. I really do. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm never going to play it, just because it's not my thing, really. I was just surprised to see... It seems like every every year there's like one game, maybe a few games, that uh, review okay, but then when people get their hands on them, they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, this is trash. And it sort of seems like that's what The Evil Within has been thus far this year. Um, I was, I'm trying to think of like other games that fit that, and I sort of feel like Assassin's Creed 3 is going for what I'm talking about, where... People think that game is shitty, but it still was like, ah, it's like an 8, you know? Right. Uh, from from press, and I feel like that's what's happening to The Evil Within. I actually need to read more of the really positive reviews and try and understand how those happened. Uh, if there's maybe some key point that I'm really missing out on, or if it's just that my biases are so strong that I literally can't see what they're seeing. I think the what, what kind of rubs or me both. the wrong way is that idea that, you know, we're going to make this cinematic, but kind of like at the expense of... Like, I, I don't believe that they're actually being dishonest. There's some companies that when they say, like, oh, we're going to make it, you know, 30 FPS and you're not going to have that many uh, visual options because it, it preserves the integrity of the, you know, cinematic artistic vision, blah, blah, blah. There's some right. companies that I think are actually just, that's PR spin, right? But I, yeah. I almost feel that for this, they were like, okay, we believe that, but still, like, give people the option, at least. <laughs> right. Like... And I know it sounded maybe disingenuous when I said I wanted to give it every chance and then I just kind of was super negative about it, but no, I really honestly did want to play the whole game in one sitting. Really? But I just couldn't. How long is it? I don't know, uh, maybe 8-10 hours, something like that? I wasn't talking about the game. Oh, 8-10 inches then. <laughs> it depends on the, depends on the stimulus. Yep. Exactly. Candy's dandy, but liquor's quicker. Ooh, baby, what? a subscriber! Nano Flame, thank you very much for the subscription. Spiders in the curse room. Nick, how's your run going thus far? Because mine has been remarkable. Uh, average at best. Nothing. Nothing. Ten bombs. Uh, some like I have an attack fly or something or an orbital yeah. rather. All right, I'm with you on those. I have the you know range up. I have the guppy tail. Not you, very good on hearts. Are you on uh, like basement two or cellar two? Seller 2, yeah. Have you fought the boss yet? Yeah. You didn't get a deal with the devil. 
I did, but I didn't have enough hearts that it would have been worth doing. You didn't. I could have gotten the nail. The nail. Yeah. Did we get different stuff or something? I had. Um, I definitely had mom's knife for two hearts, and then something else. Hmm. That's weird. I. In addition, I also after picking up mom's knife, I picked up epic fetus in the secret. Ooh, room. baby, you oh, subscriber. Shit, man. Yeah, this is a well, wild good one. grab. <laughs> Bloody angry, thank you for the subscription as well. Here's the requisite, you know, once every three subs, up down to the side, welcome to the Lion Pride. So yeah, my run's in a weird place. I actually prefer Mom's Knife to Epic Fetus, but we don't mm -hmm. get Fetus runs that often, so let's let's give it a try. And you haven't even become Guppy yet, so there's always that too. Well, I'm still holding out hope that we can salvage this run by becoming Guppy, yeah. Okay. Hmm. I have no keys, that's gonna be a problem. I also have map and compass. That's pretty sweet. And the attack fly and the 10 bombs. It's going all right, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, oh, I almost grabbed that eternal heart by accident. Let's save that for later. You should pick it up, man, it's pretty good. Uh, Yeah, I save it for when I go down a floor. So no, but it makes you play better if you've got it on because you're mm. like, oh, it's like carrying around an egg in your front pocket, right? You're gonna make sure you don't bump into oh, anybody. I mean, you'd know all about that. You got something to say? You know, I ate an egg this morning. I thought of you. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't. People eat eggs all the time. I eat eggs. What's I had a ramen. Eggs? I put a hard-boiled egg in it. I had a ramen. A uh, the bowl of ramen. All right, that's a plus. <laughs> that's the wrong nomenclature for how I describe <laughs> that. Sorry. I that was like saying I had a spaghetti or something. I think. That's so maybe you're right. I'm just. I've never. I heard refueled. It. I had a spaghetti. That seems like a thing you could say. I don't know. You guys say you had a spaghetti? Is that weird? I don't think anybody says I had a spaghetti. Go have spaghetti. yourself a spaghetti and come back. Spaghetti. Yeah, it's, it's Tim and Eric reference right deep there. Deep into the Tim and Eric lately. I watched your on cinema thing. That was fantastic. On cinema is pretty funny, man. I like on cinema. I like the whole Tim and Eric brand of comedy. It's not for everybody. A lot of it is kind of like middling, like. In my opinion, I watched Tim and Eric's Billion Dollar Movie, and I was like, oh, it's, you know, it's got some funny stuff going on, but I, I, I can get into that absurdity. Like, this, the Steve Brule stuff is actually, like, my spirit animal, I think. <laughs> I'm actually surprised that you could say that. I mean, I know it's tongue-in-cheek, but, like, you don't seem like the type of person that would have a spirit animal, and you do. And it's Tim and Eric. I have a spirit animal, yeah. No, it's Steve Brule. Well, okay. Completely, they're, they're tangentially related, Nick, but he's his own person. Yeah, I'd like to believe that the actors, because that's two levels deep acting, actually. Right, yeah, he's, who's acting the actors, basically. They don't even have names. Tim and Eric or Kids in the Hall? Well, you know, the, the thing about Kids in the Hall is that they're Canadian, so I think I'm going to have to say Kids in the Hall. Tim and Eric aren't Canadian? Tim and Eric are from the United States of America. Oh. They seem Canadian to me for some reason. Why? Because they're funny? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you know, we've, we've already got Jim Carrey, Mike Myers, Justin Bieber, Celine Dion. We can't have all, a monopoly on all the talent. <laughs> I just died to fucking Chad. I'm the worst. You should redo this seed and get Mom's knife in your uh, I agree. deal with the devil. Dude, that is crazy. There was like six donations. All right, go ahead. I had I had six dollars and nine dollars <laughs> from Twitch TV official sixty nine with the message official Twitch TV message. Nice. <laughs> thank you very much, official Twitch TV sixty nine, and thank you, Audio Dragon, for the five dollar donation. Hey Nick and Ryan, I am an interior architect living in Turkey, and I've wow. been listening to you guys just talk about stuff while I do my work for more than a year now. Thank you. That is very kind, Nick. and I'm glad to hear that we've reached you and that you've enjoyed it. Congrats on being objectively more successful than us, too. Same. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's something to be proud of. And thank you to John Smith for the dollar donation. Uh, hey, Nick, sorry to hear about the floater in your toilet. There was one of those in my work toilet. Everyone got mad. <laughs> well, I think you misunderstood, but that's okay. I don't know. How could you get mad floater. at someone for their bowel movements? Like... You know, they don't control them, really. I mean, you have some control, I hope, but... You don't control your rusty pipes, though. Yeah, I guess. I guess you could take that in a different way, too. Like, occasionally, you know, when I go to the bathroom at a friend's house, they're like, don't clog the toilet. I'm like, what do you want me to do then, man? Hold it in. All right. 
I gotta go. Use your sphincter muscle to somehow break up the turd as it comes out of you. Do you just, like, want me to die, then? Like, oh, don't clog the toilet. Okay, I'll tell you what, then. I'll just, uh, you know, have my bowels rupture and go into, like, septic shock or something. That would kill you, yeah. That's how, um, Tycho Brahe died, man. At least that's the legend. I think Gabe I've wasn't there to drive him to the hospital? I think I've told this story, like, 50 times. They don't yeah. live together. They, they have, like, oh. families and stuff. But, yeah, Tycho Brahe was, like... The legend has it, was like invited to uh, like a noble's house or like his patron's castle or something like that, and he really had to piss. But they're like eating dinner, and it's impolite apparently to excuse yourself and say, you know, I gotta go to the bathroom, even though, you know, really? you gotta like, everyone's gotta do it, right? And uh, he just like held it in so long, and this is a testament to his extraordinary politeness, but he held it in so long that like his bladder exploded and he died, which I don't even think is possible. Because I think you would just like lose your ability to hold it before you died. But I don't know, man. If you move the wrong way and it like pinches, maybe I imagine there'd be pressure from all the urine in your bladder. Uh, that's not even like a, a matter of opinion. We're not a doctor, we're not doctors collectively. That's correct, yeah. Uh, but that just seems to me like that could be a thing that happens. You know, you could get all kinds of weird ruptures going on inside if you have you know, a bad day. <laughs> Had a bad, a bad day. day. My organs all ruptured. <laughs> now I'm dead, and that's the whole damn song. The end. You know that guy? That's Daniel Powder. Guess what, Nick? He got struck by lightning. No, that's that's oh. Daniel Powder. Oh. What about Daniel Powder? So I heard a story about the guy who made powder, and you know, it's I always kind of consider the dust or the movie. The the movie and okay. I always kind of considered that powder was a metaphor for Being an outsider. Yes, but probably most closely related to like being gay That's the way I figured right. it is like I think I saw that too. All right, so that's what I always figured But I think I heard now I'm gonna need somebody to fact check this for me because if I'm wrong I really don't want this myth to persist. I think I heard that like the director is actually like a white supremacist or something Whoa. And well, that changes a lot. And so his movie is more like, man, I can't believe I'm being persecuted because I'm a white supremacist, sort of. It's kind of like a, a heavily veiled metaphor. Man, I can't believe. Ugh. That's I'm thinking, and I, I'm not <laughs> thinking. That's what I've been told or I heard at some point. I'm gonna need you to confirm or deny whether or not that's true. Because if it's not true, I don't want it to propagate. Not that he's necessarily. I don't know what he's doing now, but I don't believe everything you've been told. I mean. The Illuminati may behind, be behind everything, but they don't let everything get out. Exactly. That's just definition, yeah. It's just par for the course. Par for the course. We would know, because we got par once in Vertiginous Golf. I'm glad you went there, because you beat me to it. Also, Daniel Powder, he's Canadian. Oh, cool. Yeah. I still don't know who Daniel Powder is. I'm just thinking uh, of the character from that movie. He he sings Bad Day. That song Bad oh. Day. Somehow I didn't make that connection even though you just talked about that. Now you All know. right. You'll never forget now. Broccoli, chocolate or peanut butter or jam? I presume you're talking about toast. Uh, and chocolate means what? Nutella? Just in no. Just, just straight up it, chocolate. Take it at face value, man. What are you trying to do? Take a to go double with? boiler and make some chocolate spread for yourself? Oh, uh, okay. Nick, we've found yeah. out. Um, he's not a white supremacist. That's my bad. It's a terrible thing to, uh, not accuse, but suggest that maybe someone is. But he did get charged for inappropriately touching a 12-year-old boy. Oh. Well, that does change the narrative a little bit, but still bad. You can see that the, my sentiment was not super far off. Yeah, I guess. Those the, are pretty both bad things, sure. The, the story got... Nick, can you please stop being so offensive as to say that white supremacy is a bad thing? I mean, different people have to choose their own directions in life. Oh. Alright. Okay, sure. Whatever. I, mean, I was just joking, obviously. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's... Uh, the story got a little bit uh, convoluted in my head, but I'm glad to hear that at least the sentiment Ooh, was kind baby, of in the right place. subscriber! Skull C M K. Up down to the side. Skull Welcome to Lion Pride. And thank you to Brady Dean for the five dollar donation. Thanks for being entertaining, Nick. I'd like to take this opportunity to shout my best bro, Ryan Donahue. Love you, buddy. Thanks very much for the donation, man. Brian Donahue. Who's Brian Donahue? 
Ryan Donahue. Oh, that's me. That's you. And then I had a five dollar donation from Ryan Donahue. Really? Hey Nick, big fan of your stream and good uh, and your YouTube channel. Is it possible you could say hey to my best buddy Brady Dean? Oh, I get it now. Okay. Good, good dude. Love Ryan. That works. I love you good too. Good job. Thank you very much. There is no other Ryan. How's your run going, Nick? I don't know, man. Uh, still not what you got. Yeah? Did you go to the deal with the devil? I'm on that fight right now. You should yeah, take your take your die in as well. I did. I would have suggested. I'll try not to reroll nothing before the boss fight ends. <laughs> Cause if you get mom's knife, you you're sitting in the you're sitting pretty. But that's I'm, not seated, right? Like that doesn't have any chance of happening. For the me. deal with the devil is seated, yeah. No, but the reroll isn't. I think it is. Really? I think it is. It's a question for a, a smarter man than myself, but snaps. Yeah, where's snap? We have for Put us. the snap symbol up. It's just a. I don't even know. It's a D six that goes into the in darkness. The <laughs> and then Biz Snap drops some knowledge in the form of an owl with a message. Why? Why the owl? I don't know. Why not? Like a Zelda thing. There are owls in Zelda, but I just like owls. Can I just like owls? Yeah, but I don't see why you have to push your owl like on a biz snap. I've never heard. I'm not saying he hates owls. I've just never heard of him expressing a preference for owls one way or the other. Why do you, you can't just make biz snap hate owls because you decided You're that? You're just trying to associate like something you like with someone you like, even though they haven't suggested that they have an opinion on it. How do you think Joseph Stalin feels about Uncrustables, Nick? Stalin. He hates him. Not, uh, I didn't get it with the devil, so... That's not where I expected you to go on that one. Owls where tend I... to symbolize wisdom, apparently. Yeah, see? I knew what I was talking about. I mean, you didn't, but someone knew what you were talking about, so <laughs> you're lucky, mister. Ah, I got a jar of uh, fetus. Oh, yeah, in the secret room. In the secret room. It's not a, uh, it's not fetus in a jar, even though it is a fetus in a jar, Nick. It's actually epic fetus. No, I got the jar of a fetus, I mm, said. Nope, that's, uh, you got the item confused. They're totally different. How do you know that that jar isn't possessed by that fetus? Look, you want to talk about stuff based in reality, we can do that. If you want to go off on this, uh, you know, hey, we got a hotel with an infinite number of rooms, what room are you staying in? I'd say... Um, You're not staying at that hotel. I'd tell you the wrong number so you couldn't find me. And it would take you a long time to search. After we just discussed for a minute whether or not Biznap likes owls, this yeah. is the breaking point. Yep, yeah, this is it. It's already happened. Okay. 326. It's 10 That's minutes natural. after. 10 minutes after Stone Cold does that thing. Whatever it is. Steve 316, right? I wasn't sure if that was because it was a, such a stunning move or because he actually physically stunned his opponent. The move. Why is the move called the stunner? Yeah. Because it stuns them. Like, yeah, but isn't it physically. stunning to look at, too? Sure, yeah, that's an unintended consequence, but I think it's because it, like, shatters their brain stem, so they're, like, straight up stunned. Oh, fuck. How many people does that kill? I don't know. Most of them? You're lucky that wrestling is embellished. No, it isn't. Don't say that. It's real to me, damn it. Somebody's gonna believe that it's it's a joke, and then they're gonna have their dreams ruined because of you. Don't I'll do that. admit that when, during, like, the Attitude Era, when I didn't watch wrestling, but a lot of people I knew did, Keep in mind, I was like 13. I was like, why do people even watch this shit? It's fake. Well, yeah, why does anyone watch anything? Right, it's that's exactly where I'm I'm like, wow, I was an asshole. <laughs> First off, they obviously know it's fake. Nobody out there is like, wait, what, did Stone Cold like seriously just commission a beer truck and Vince, Ma <laughs> why does Vince McMahon keep him on the contract if he's like, you know, such a, you know, uh, wild card? Asking the hard questions, man. It's exactly. Man, I, I love that. I don't watch wrestling, but I love that, like, aggressive thing that people do. It's like, wrestling's not even real. Why would you watch it? You know, like, all I watch are documentaries. I exclusively read nonfiction. Every time a comedian tells a joke that starts with, so I was at the, I just believe it. Because why would he lie, right? Who's Eli? He had a book or something. There's a spoiler somewhere. I've never That's seen the bad. Movie. Hey, thanks very much to Triple X Mateos Triple X. I greatly appreciate your uh, do your donation, your subscription, yeah. and welcome to the quarry. I mean, it's a donation as well. If you think about it. Yeah, basically. You get some services in exchange for it. You get pictures. You get some emails. Like tiny, tiny pictures. 
get access, it's, well, for me, you get access to the substream if I don't cancel it like I always do. What a scum. I know, right? How's anybody supposed to do anything with you? You just cancel it every day. Using his wife's kidney infection as an excuse to not give people what they paid for. Ultimate scum. This is a piece of shit, basically. Uh, what do, you, do you have the hookup on some keys? I'd really like some keys. You don't need keys. I need keys because I can't get this item room. You don't need the, uh, the uh, I'll just tell you, the item rooms are bad, Nick. Except for I the have one a map and a compass, so honestly I should have all this under control, but I'm asking you anyway. Except for the one that gave me Polyphemus. Hmm. Need some keys, though. Yeah, just go to the shop and buy some. Can't. No keys. Oh, all right, well. You knew that when you said it, too. <laughs> maybe you can find a skeleton key in the item room or something. Oh, well, I can't go in there either. No keys. Huh? Hmm. Maybe uh, yeah. if you, like, pop open a golden chest, you can get some keys out of it. That's actually a really good idea. I didn't think of that. All right, let's get into this golden chest. Wait a minute. Ah. You got gotcha. me again. I gotcha. If I hit it with enough bombs, it should open anyway. Maybe they'll fix that in Rebirth. It's a bug, not a feature. One second here. Ah, first thing that drops is a fucking key on the next floor. Oh, I clicked on the screen by accident and blew myself up. That's okay. Plenty of HP. Sauce. It is awesome sauce anyway, do we know? It's just something people who are super cool say instead of awesome. I thought it was just semen. Well, that says a lot about you, Nick. They use it in that context all the time, don't they? Oh yeah, I'm gonna splatter your face with my awesome sauce. Nobody says that. Probably. Okay, maybe they don't say that exactly, but I feel like they've been given context Ooh, baby, enough a times. Subscriber. Kim in the nets. Up down to the side, welcome to the Lion Pride. I hope it's like a basketball thing and you're not like a tuna that's been, you know, caught in the net or something oh, like that. that. Or sad. You got like a soda pop, like soda lid. Pop lid. You got it. Nick, I'm gonna ask you a hard-hitting question that I spent a lot of time thinking about this weekend. I can't wait. I want to hear your tier list of the the sauces. All sauces. Oh. All of them? Yeah. Even the mother sauces? Well, the mother sauces are the ones that I would want to hear your opinion on the most because those are the they're the foundation of like nice French cooking. This. All right. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna be. Don't don't get caught up in the logistics here. If you leave out a couple of sauces, I'll just I'll throw well, them in there. We could go back and me. we could retcon them later. Exactly. Make, yeah. Just, just get a head start on it. You know. Journey of a uh, thousand. Very sauces. high on my list. Top tier sauces: uh, barbecue sauce and horseradish sauce. All right. There and then go. we've got honey mustard somewhere right under that. Uh, then we've got many cream based sauces, which are all quite good. Uh, and and mustard are also in there, and then somewhere under that is ketchup. Okay. Is that all the sauces? I feel like that it's is all like the none of the sauces basically. Butter sauce is somewhere in there too, probably like under the white sauces. What the hell is butter sauce? It's like what you dip a lobster in. That's just butter. It's butter sauce. You clarify the butter so it becomes more liquid. It's just melted. <laughs> yeah, it's clarified. It's got it's not, okay, sure, it's clarified. Yeah. It's not butter sauce, though. Are we clear? It's a chef name. That's like, uh, you know, the the bullshit Papa John's garlic sauce. It's just melted butter and freaking garlic powder. It's not sauce, man. It's a Charles it's a, Oberon, I don't think it went through. I didn't see it come through. Sorry. It's just a dipper. You're just a dipper? You're just out for a dip, are you, bud? I refuse to acknowledge butter sauce, but you may continue. Uh, oh, I forgot about, like, fish sauce and plum sauce. Those are both pretty good, too. Plum sauce, I would include. Fish sauce, I'd say, is less of a sauce, more or of a... Exactly. You got it. Well, but the things that it's included in are often quite savory and delicious, so... I, I include it just out of respect, if that makes sense. That's ridiculous. No. Oh. Doesn't make any sense. What other sauces are there? What about uh, the freaking spaghetti sauces. sauce? Oh, those are great. I love spaghetti sauce. You put some mushrooms in there. Some garlic. Yeah, some good sauce experiences what, with that what kind of thing. What sauces do you not like then? You've gone... Your tier list is exclusively good things. Why does there have to be a negative there list? There has to Can be... just be a descending list of what, positives? Okay, what are the lowest tier then? I already said probably ketchup. I don't even think that's a condiment, not a sauce, so... Well, I like sauces a lot. I don't know what you want. You got what's your least favorite sauce, Nick? I don't know. I just gave you a lot of positive oh sauces. Oh my god, this guy 
you know, refuses What's your to least take favorite a stand. sauce? So I know what's even an option. Cream-based sauces, Alfredo's. Yeah, those are not my least favorite. That's you just wanted to know what mine was. I'm not trying to give you inspiration. Right. I'm just trying to answer your question, give you the courtesy that you oh, never gave me. Oh, uh, vodka sauce, I think, is my least favorite sauce. Isn't vodka sauce just like a kind of spaghetti sauce? Yeah, but it's kind of gross to me. It makes me kind of feel sick when I eat it. That's weird. It's the color, mostly. It's like kind of an off orange pink sometimes. And yeah. it just reminds me of vomit. And then the taste isn't that good either, so I just kind of don't want it. All right. Well, I'm glad you got your answer. I'm glad you're taking a stand. Uh, I'm going to say at the bottom, cream-based sauces, mostly centered around the Alfredo family. Um, Does that include tzatziki sauce? No, tzatziki is not based on cream, always. Based on yogurt as well. Well, I was just thinking because you know white sauces, cream sauces. No, 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 no! Don't, uh, don't misrepresent me. Okay. Just cream. I wasn't. Mis I was just clarifying. I wasn't misrepresenting. Always with the clarifications with this guy. Um, <sighs> Not butter. I think a list of a uh, barbecue sauces. Some of them can be great. Some of them can be middling. As a whole, I would put barbecue sauces maybe like a couple tiers above the bottom. Um, plum sauce is up there. Honey mustard. Well, all mustards, but, like, I would just put the mustard family in there uh, at a pretty high, like, dipping sauce level. Dijon, honey, hot. Super spicy, though? Does that count in there? Absolutely. Super spicy yes, mustards? Yeah, I don't want to delineate too much. Uh, mustard-based sauces are up there. Um, but I'm going to say that, and this is not my normal palate, top-tier sauce for me, an S-tier, in good company, like a buffalo sauce. Not just not so, just hot sauces. I'm gonna delineate here selectively. That's leaning more on the vinegar family then. Yeah, I'm, I'm a more of a vinegar hot sauce fan. Uh, uh, yeah, less for me. Really, what's your hot sauce then? Uh, I go more peppery than vinegary. Peppery, isn't that that's not that's a false dilemma, isn't it? Is it? Maybe you, it is. You can have like a peppery vinegary. It's not like one's based on pepper and one's based on vinegar. Well, no, but if you were to look at the ratio, I prefer a higher ratio of pepper to vinegar. Okay. I want the the bitterness of the vinegar to be eliminated if possible, if that makes more sense. Okay. Okay. Reroll throw. Did I I threw Mick? Were you dead? No, I may actually end up dying though. Oh. I got too into the sauce meta. Yeah, same. Like, I was totally into the uh, evil within meta at first, and that totally made me throw my run. That's okay. Came back stronger than ever. I got a fetus uh, fetus's jar. <laughs> It's only 3.36, jeez. Condiments are not sauces. Don't try to tell me that ketchup is a sauce. It literally is a sauce, though. It's not a sauce! Oh, here's some uh, spaghettini and a ketchup sauce. If you said that, you would be like, thanks for cooking that for <laughs> me, my four-year-old self. I'd actually be pissed if somebody ever said those words to me. Exactly. <laughs> Condiments are not sauces. <laughs> Even though I... You're right. Yeah. Condiments are not sauce. Sauces can be condiments, but not vice versa. Like a hot sauce can be a condiment. Okay. Don't try to tell me ketchup is tomato sauce. That's just, there is a, a strong correlation between them, but they are different enough to be meaningful. Hey, thank you to XLumi for the $1.69 donation. Been watching the stream since NL's first bridge building stream. I don't remember that. I wish I was there for that. Loved it for nearly two years now. I feel like I need to give back a little. Uh, also remember the time Nick died to Pinwheel. Yes, of course, we all finally remember that. Thank you. And thank you to Skeleman for the $1.97 donation with the link reddit.com slash r slash too spooky for me. And thank you to DickFuck69 for the dollar donation money can buy happiness. Sometimes. Thanks very much, everybody. Ooh, baby, a subscriber. And you know what, Infamous Five Mask? Big old thanks to you as well. Ketchup and tomato sauce are different. If you said, hey, can I have some tomato sauce for my pizza, and they came out with a bottle of Heinz ketchup, you would leave them a one-star review on Yelp. I don't think I would eat it, at the least. I would probably just eat the pizza. Out of laziness, though, I might not actually do that. How do you feel about marinara, Nick? Oh, I'm positive toward it. All right, we're on the same page. If you had your choice between marinara and ranch dressing, what would you take? What am I eating it on? Pizza. Oh, absolutely marinara, no right. question. We're cool then. <laughs> we can get along. <laughs> Who the hell wants ranch dressing on their pizza? Dude, get out you, of here. you're missing out. There is a huge what? proportion of the population that loves ranch dressing on their pizza. 
but people are crazy. Like, people get in fights about whether or not pineapple should be included on pizza toppings, and that's not even a thing. Ranch ever dressing argue. is less controversial than pineapple for pizza. I'll just tell you that right now. After the dipping it. revolution happened in like the early 2000s, 1993, late 90s. I think. Yeah, exactly. After dippers started to become commonplace, uh, ranch dressing took its place probably as the chief dipper amongst them. Wish I could have been the chief dipper. When did sriracha sauce become such a popular idea? I have a, uh, I have sriracha in my house at all times. Yeah. And I like it. I think it's a little overrated. It's got the same kind of, you know, internet cult that, uh, like, bacon has. It's a bacon thing. Yeah, exactly. I thought that too, actually. Bacon's delicious. I have had sriracha bacon, and you know what? I ate it, and I was like, this is pretty good. But I don't think that sriracha is worth the insane kind of, like, fandom that surrounds it. I'll, I use it all the time, but still. I find it just a little too spicy for my taste, but I like the flavor of it. You know what? I have a pretty high tolerance for spicy food. And oftentimes, I think it's a little easy to overdo it on the sriracha. I, I, I prefer a milder hot sauce a lot of the time. In, like, pho or something like that, though. Right. I mean, just a, a drop is, like, a lot. Oh, I wouldn't go down. You don't really get a drop. You get a dollop because it's more of a semi-solid. Yeah, well, thing. you're right about that. Okay. I haven't had it in a while. Drop is more of a Frank's Red Hot type Forgotten thing. Forgotten about the, the whole consistency thing. I'm more of a Tabasco person. Really? Tabasco is, like, the vinegary sauce, man. Uh, the green Tabasco, so that oh, means, well. like... Nothing. <laughs> a little milder. It's all of the mild. You could basically drink that shit. <laughs> I also think that Sriracha's popularity has uh, come at the expense of a lot of other hot sauces. For example, I don't see people who love Sriracha talking shit about Frank's Red Hot. I think Frank's Red Hot is absolutely acceptable and a great baseline for base ingredient for buffalo sauces. Okay. Fair enough. Do you consider wasabi a sauce? Ooh, that's a tough a question. Paste. You can make a wasabi sauce out of it, but the base of it is horseradish, right? So it's a horseradish thing, not a wasabi thing. I'd be inclined to I agree with Nick. I'd be inclined to agree with Nick on this one, yeah. I was thinking about all that stuff earlier when I was coming up with my list. Fair enough. Nick, here's a question for you. Does the green Tabasco look any different from the red one? <laughs> it's exactly the same. It's bright red. Interesting to know uh, your, your thoughts on that. It is it is a green sauce, but other than that, it's very similar, and it comes in a very similar bottle. What about Cholula? I'll admit that I've never had Chipu uh, Ch Chapula. Cholula. Cholula. Chahuahua. Nor have I had um, Tapatio. Tapatio? You know. I've actually never had either of them. Yeah, me neither. Uh, I, I guess I'm, I live in predominantly a Tabasco, Sriracha kind of region. Brimstone and Book of Sin, god damn it. I had the nail and uh curse of the Ooh, no, baby, what the hell was it? The, the moon with the star. Uh Horror Babylon. Hey, that's the one. I'm a big poopy stink butt. <laughs> Up down to the side, welcome to the Lion Pride. Are you? NL wears mayonnaise on this list. Uh it would be White sauces. It would be kind of in the same category as white sauces, not because they're the same color, but because they both occupy kind of a similar kind of like cream mouth world. feel for me. Not, don't say cream world. <laughs> it conjures all sorts of grossness. Um, and I, I'm not really a big fan of mayonnaise straight, but you know, I can get down with some kind of, like if I'm having sweet potato fries, some nice like Dijonese or something like that is, is delicious. And occasionally like a creamy salad dressing I can get behind, but for the most part, not really. If you're having uh, fish sticks or like fish and chips, what's the situation for mayonnaise on that? Because I actually not, I like that. not mayonnaise. No, 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 tartar sauce. Well, if you don't have tartar sauce, though, mayonnaise is like the poor man's tartar. No, nah, if you don't have tartar sauce, you put freaking uh, malt vinegar on it. I actually just hate that I said the poor man's tartar. I could actually get away with just putting some lemon juice on it too. Yeah, I, I agree. I prefer the, uh, you know, I'm a vinegar man. I, uh, Just a little dab of, of mayo is fine for me. Not nah. Miracle Whip. Nah, Don't dog. get me wrong. Nah. Malt vinegar. Is that... Yeah, stay away from the vinegars. I think that's like a Canadian thing a little bit, isn't it? Vinegar if you want to get into vinegars, the only place that I'm going to get really into that is when you're doing the, the bread with okay, the two vinegar yeah. dipping. I could super get into that. I'm dip my two vinegars in your bread box. Uh, What does the arrow do for... Dr. Fetus, nothing, right? Yeah, you get, I mean, that's why I, I prefer 
some other items to uh, oh, defeat crack this item. This guy is the reroll. Great. There's Thanks. No, Thanks uh, for that. There's so limited synergies. Limited synergies. Ridged chips. I picked up some like mango salsa chips the other day. I haven't right. tried them yet, yeah. but that sounds pretty interesting. I, I think they might be good. I think we've been through this before, but um, what's your like potato chip meta? What's number one? You get to choose. Out of anything? Anything. No loopholes. You can choose whatever potato chip suits your fancy. It, the only loophole, the only condition is that it has to exist. It varies a little by taste. Some days I want some things more than others, no. but Today. in general, I'm not going to be super depressed about getting a, a Pringles barbecue. Doesn't chip. that really sum up how people feel about potato chips? The best potato chip is just one that doesn't make you super depressed. Because like, <laughs> if you're, you're eating a potato time. chip that, right. that doesn't taste amazing, you're like, why am I eating this? If I can dip them in something, like uh, some just regular ruffles in cottage cheese is actually what really good. What the fuck are you talking about? Regular ruffles dipped in cottage cheese? This Cat, is this isn't like a regional naming thing. I need thing, you right? to rally here. I need you to tell me that one of you out there has tried it and it's so, not a bad thing. Like this is this is cottage cheese 100 percent This is not like cream cheese, like no, sour cream. This is just cottage cheese. This man. is just cottage, regular cottage cheese. cheese. Regular ruffles dipped in cottage cheese. Chat, I would love if you could tell me whether or not this is a real thing. Oh my god, Nick, ah ha ha. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. Okay, so Emerald Herald and me can get along a little bit. Thank you, by the way, to Phoenix775 for the $5 no donation. That was a little bit old now. It says, Sriracha loves Sriracha's life. Well, if you're into it, I don't know if I, uh, I don't know if I said thank you, by the way, to Dickfuck69, but even if I did, bears repeating. <laughs> oh. Said it once before, but it bears repeating now. Nick, like... <laughs> Can we do a straw poll? I think you don't want to see the results of those. I'm just kind of curious, like, what percentage will even be in my side on this one. All right. I mean, if someone wants to post that straw poll, just one, please. Ooh, baby, a subscriber. And then could also, like, tell us what it ends up as, because I can't really look. Ten for instigating. Thank you uh, for the subscription as well. I, I've i never heard of using cottage cheese as a dip, but I've never heard of using cottage cheese for anything except as a, like, snack for bodybuilders. And, like, my mom. <laughs> wow. Sometimes. Um, I think there's a whole world of people doing other things out there that you may never try, so. So okay. to be super Canadian... Ooh, baby, a subscriber. First off, Sin Magic 14. Thank you for the subscription as well. But to be super Canadian, rep the Canadian pride. Miss Vicky's jalapeno or sea salt and malt vinegar chips. They're top tier. They're up there. They're kettle cooked. Kettle cooked before kettle cooking became like this, you know, new hip thing. They were just, they They're were the only. delight. Exactly. They were the only kettle cookers on the block up here until like, you know, maybe 10 years ago. So mad respect for that. Um... I know that someone was like, you don't have this in Canada, but in Norway, we have this chip called Blah Blah. Like, check it out. And I looked at it, and I was like, that looks like Miss Vicky's. And it is. Apparently, I don't know which way the transfer of information went. I, yeah, either like a Norwegian guy came to Canada and was like, these are delicious, and then reverse engineered and took it back to Norway, or vice versa. Um, so that's those two chips are the same. As for Ruffles, to... no. I have to shout out Ula La Boy and okay. say, how come your name didn't show up on my subscriber shout out thing? That's strange. You did something mysterious, but thank you very much. On the Ruffles train, you don't buy original Ruffles, dip them in cottage cheese. You get all Good dressed. Too. You get all dressed Ruffles. You know, the purple bag. I don't think I know as much about the color of the bags as you do. All dressed might be a Canadian thing. But, uh, you know, it's on the front, it's got the vinegar, and then it's got, like, a sliced onion, and then, like, a red pepper next to it. I would almost guarantee that none of those ingredients are actually involved in the production of them. But that's... And the flavor is just, like, tangy salt. Uh, I know that I like sun chips that are in a green bag, so that's good. No, the you go to the orange bag. Or harvest, red. Harvest, red is fine no, as well. No, you don't get garden salt. You're deliberately trying to be contrarian. Harvest Thanks very much, Sin Magic 14 for the subscription. Harvest cheddar is the default sun chips flavor. 
No, green is. No, French onion. You don't even know the name of it. French onion, I know the name. I said the name. I just said it. If we're on the Lay's meta, I think that's where you get your uh, you get your barbecues in there. I think barbecue Lay's is pretty good. Dill pickles, all right. Pringles, though? Pringles? You wouldn't even go near that? Pring uh, dude, we're, we're on the same page. I'm a big fan of Pringles. Yeah, barbecue. Uh, really I, good. Honestly, more of a regular guy when it comes to Pringles. Just standard. Yeah. What about dipping? I don't think you dip a Pringle. You sure can if it's a regular. I mean, it doesn't. It tastes like potato. It's not like you it doesn't get a, taste like anything. A, a queso sauce if you want, if you're into that. You dip your. No, then you. Then I just want some tortilla chips if I got a queso sauce. You gotta have the proper dip for the proper chip. Oh, spinach dip! You just reminded me how much I love spinach dip. What are you dipping your Pringles in on a raid? Pringles don't have the kind of structural integrity to survive a dip, Nick. No, that's why I said a queso sauce, something melty, something light. It's like uh, like Lay's. You can't dip Lay's because you're going to lose like 80% of your chip to the crumb factor. Right, and then eventually it just becomes some sort of background texture as you're trying to eat around all these chip chunks. Exactly, yeah. It's it's basically, the chips, the chips become gaseous, basically. Yeah, because I guess every time you dip, they break again, sort of like a fistula. You got it exactly right, yeah. That's why they're so hard to operate on. Uh, thank you very much to Big D Docking Dude for the $5 donation. Uh, yo, my mom dips her chips in milk. Is this weird? That's, I think it's weird. That's fucking strange. I don't even necessarily believe that that's true. But I'm willing to take you on face value, because that's crazy town. Feel Re free. Regular ruffles, not dipped in cottage cheese, dipped in, like, dill pickle Philadelphia dip. Not Flippadelphia, Nick. Ah, I was thinking it. Philadelphia. This stupid new Pringles ad I can't get away from argues that they can be dipped. But yeah, that's a new kind of Pringle, right? It's like a that's Pringles new Pringle dippers. meta. They're dippers or something? Don't, Probably stronger integrity. Don't do that. We don't need Pringles dippers. We have Pringles. We don't need Lay's stacks. We don't need this. I don't know why they had to go with these weird plastic containers. Like, the cardboard ones were just fine. They I, were taller, too. I, honestly, I almost feel like maybe Lay's knows that. But they they tried to do it, and it's like that can is patented or something. Like maybe right. the Pringles Corporation has a patent on like metallic infused cardboard cardboard <laughs> cylindrical cans. Like those cans are so useful though. Like you can store all kinds of stuff in them. Tennis balls. Yeah, mostly tennis balls. Just tennis balls. Do you guys have crispers? Uh, sounds familiar, but I don't so think so. Crispers are like a imagine a flag. If you were to draw a flag. Dynamic all the time. Yeah, it wouldn't be a rectangle, right? It would have like a wave in it, but would not we're... be erect angle no. Exactly um, It's like that and they're baked and so they're kind of like a midway between a cracker and a chip I think they're delicious, but they're a very divisive food here. Um, some people are into them. Some people think they're trash It's okay. I mean you're into whatever you're into. I'm not gonna judge you for it. I'm um, you yeah, you shouldn't mr. Regular chips dipped in cottage cheese. Holy crap. What's up with you that? You could do with tortilla chips too, but it just doesn't taste as good. Like, the salt in the regular chips really goes no. well with it. You put tortilla chips, you got salsa, you got guac, you got queso, that's oh, it. Oh, guac's so good. Guac's, it's fantastic. Nobody's arguing guac. No, I know they're not. I just wanted to weigh in and say, I like guac. All right. I'm glad to hear that. That's all. I wonder if guacamole could actually go as, like, a poutine topping. There is a uh, smokes, smokes poutinery does do like a taco like a Mexican poutine. style. Yeah, like it, it might actually be called Mexican poutine. Huh. Yeah. There's so many types of poutine I'm never going to get a chance to try. I got to go to Canada. Honest, no, you're, you're not missing out. As long as you can get some regular now and then. I think that's all you need. Love like, is all you need. Poutine is fantastic, but uh, I think like once you get into that artisanal poutine where you start being like, well, I've gotten bored with the poutine. That's when you need to take a step back and do a detox for like six months and just not touch them. And then well, I've had exactly two in my whole life, so I'm not go, at that yeah. point yet. Not a big fan uh, of this room. Thank you to Super Nice Guy Jeff with coffee for the 569 donation. Nick and NL, I wanted to know your lyrical analysis on the Cranberries song Zombie. All right. We can get to that, but I also want to shout out Kate Sugar Potatoes for the 569 donation. Please don't use this for ruffles and cottage cheese by real snacks. All right, well, thank you very much for the donation. I guarantee you that 569 will not go towards that. So I, I'll just admit that I don't really know 
Uh, zombies in your head, in your head. Well, zombies, I know that. Zombies. Yeah. Everybody knows that. And I, when I was teaching in Korea, we, we went to karaoke all the time. And there was like a mid-30s lady who worked with us who would always sing it. And I think she was of the appropriate age, which means she's like a little older than me. So I don't know, I don't know the words, but it's like, it's kind of, uh, it's a little political okay. or something. Because it's like, with your bombs and your guns or something like that. It's an anti-consumerism sentiment, is isn't it? it? Is it? We're all just zombies buying all the things that the government tells us to because the Illuminati and the reptile people. Apparently the song's about Northern Ireland? Oh, okay. Well, I'm a little off then. <laughs> I was just guessing. Northern Ireland, same same difference, right? Not really. Apparently it's, yeah. How how you, isn't Putin appealing? You got the right idea. You know the song. It's the one that goes zombie, 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 zombie eh, eh. Eh, eh? Yeah. And then for a while they just go like oh, oh, ah, ah. It's like a you know baby's first word. Yeah, those those are the zombies. You might have heard it prominently in Twenty Eight Days Later. And Twenty Eight Weeks Later, it actually had a reprisal in the soundtrack. It's a rare thing. Soundtrack reprisals. This is new Soundtrack meta. reprisals has just subscribed. I'm sorry I came in on reptile people. What's going on? Also, hi Nick. <laughs> no, that just happens. That's just part of the thing that we do. In Legend of Grimrock 2. Are they reptile people? Yeah, there's a class, well, a race called lizard men. And I made my guy a lizard man wizard man. And I named him. Nice. I named him Barack Luminati. Because I was, really it good. was gonna be Barack Illuminati, but then there was a character limit. So, I thought if you're gonna drop any letter from that, definitely the I. Because yep, yeah, it just seems fitting. Morrowind had lizard people too, I think. Maybe yeah. Oblivion even. How can you people say that. you don't know zombie? Everyone knows zombie. They're just trolling you. Don't worry about it. Are they? They're dropping they baby know. rages after rage. Babies. They know it. Say nay to a. Dijonay. Say yes to Dijonese in the proper context. You know, I'm not going to start putting it on my cereal, but I do think that sweet potato fries go nice with a nice, uh, you know, emulsion. We had an update here from Big D Docking Dude uh, with another 569 donation. Thanks for confirming my suspicion that milk and chips is really weird. I'm not, not, I'm not lying. It's fucking gross. That's pretty disgusting. Okay, I mean, sorry I, I questioned you there, but yeah, it's fucking gross. And thank you to Emerald Harold for the six dollars uh, donation. Please use this to buy a bag of ruffles and some cottage cheese. Okay, well now we get what we we came for here, I suppose. You're gonna get what you deserve. I don't know how to differentiate the six dollars from the other five dollar donation, though. So I guess maybe. I won't respect the wishes of either of you. We'll see. That's actually the first time I've heard that. Oh, the first time I heard that zombie song was through Hatsune Miku. Is that? Oh, really? Is that in that? That the Women in Songs Hatsune Miku edition. I will Get Kate to play it. How's Kate doing? Is she okay? She's she better today. today. She's better. Yeah. Awesome. You know, not not perfect, I'd say, but she's getting there. Perfect on the inside, well, except for her kidneys. <laughs> Kidney, probably. I don't know, I'm not a doctor. Yeah, we covered that already. <laughs> I used to put ruffles in a plastic bag, put like three spoonfuls of sugar in it, shake it up, and eat it. Oh, shit. <laughs> that is highly specific. That's like that rap song with the crushed up crackers in a plastic bag. <laughs> What was that again? Is that Rob that knew that? I have no idea what you're talking about. I think it's a Rob thing, maybe. Pink crackers, pink cookies, something like that. Building steam from a grain of salt? Some, there's a building... That was Josh that was always doing that. It's like an LL Cool J song or yeah, something. Yeah, what's that about? I don't know. He's a wild dude. I miss Josh. Make hey, Josh come back. I can't do that. Yeah, I'm telling Josh to make him come back. All right, that's fine. <laughs> what are your thoughts on crisp sandwiches? A lot of people think I'm a food snob. That's not true. I don't think that. I eat a lot of the horse shit. And I will, if I have potato chips in my house, and they've lasted long enough to make it to lunch for the next day, after a <laughs> shame-filled night, then uh, they, they're going on a sandwich. There's no question about it. I think 
potato chips on a sandwich. I, I wish that that's the next, like, culinary revolution. I want that to be okay, because it's always like, you gotta kind of say it in hushed tones. Well, what do you like on your sandwich? Well, you know, I like salami, mustard, occasionally some potato chips. Also, like, lettuce, and I'm an adult, like, I eat vegetables. I wish we could talk openly about it. I wish you could go to a burger place and they'll be like, or a sandwich place, let's say, like Subway, and they'll be like, do you want some crushed up fucking potato chips in your sandwich? I'd be like, shit, yeah. You could do DIY though. They always sell the sun chips like right where you get the sandwich. I've so done you that before. Just buy some. Yeah. yeah, just do it yourself. I, I have done that, but you gotta kinda put up a Don't screen. Don't let them see you though. Exactly, yeah, you gotta put up a screen, man. Them. The thing is, <laughs> people always think it's like really unhealthy, but you only, to get like a good potato chip lying on a sandwich, you only need like five chips. You don't want to have like every mouthful is like a, a half bag of potato chips. That that would be Absolutely, ridiculous. Yeah. You need only a few. Ing it's like, uh, you know, olives. Olives aren't good for you, but you, how many olives do you need to get a little bit of olive flavor on your dish? You're gonna see a little olive buzz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, how bad could the calories from like five chips be when you probably already have mayo or some other hey, well, you know, and you're eating topping that on your like, sandwich? You know, okay, I'll take a foot long cold cut combo. Uh, do you want Killer the... Killer Instinct. <laughs> yeah, right. Pl classic combo. I'll take, a, I'll take a foot long turkey. Uh, do you want the combo? Yeah, sure. Um, but I don't want any chips. Just give me, like, soup instead. I'm trying to watch my weight. You're eating a foot of bread! It's a foot long log of bread. It's not the potato chips fault. You might as well just go all in. I agree. Wow. This chest loadout sucks. Yeah? You're on the chest? Uh, yeah. The doctor fetus will apparently carry you. I just I'm, found I'm out. glad to hear it. I'm just I'm on like chest number three or something. They should let you ascend and like get prestige points from beating the chest multiple <laughs> times. That'd be pretty sweet. Maybe it'll be in rebirth if that ever comes out. Foot of bread needs to subscribe. I went on this I've been on this rant a lot, you know. I I don't consider myself crazy health conscious at all, but you know, I've got some knowledge in it, I guess. That's when people were like, oh, the double down sandwich. Like, that's, what a crazy, like, oh, I'd rather eat a Baconator than a double down sandwich. That two pieces of fried chicken, that's crazy. You would eat two pieces of fried chicken and fries and not bat an eye. But two pieces of fried it's, chicken as buns is like, what is this affront to physical health? It's not that, it's the presentation of it. It's the fact that it's got this big sloppy piece of American cheese and then some bacon in between it. Like, come on, man. It's it's fast food, dog. You eat a KFC. You're the you're a defender of KFC famous bowls. That's yeah, just famous a famous bowls are not nearly as bad. It's in a my bunch opinion. of food There's... mashed into a single bowl. I'm just asking for you know standards here. There's no standards in the double down world. I guess not. But it's the other thing is that like the the bun is probably worse for you than the extra piece of fried chicken. Maybe I don't know. It's it's probably close to a wash, but still. Okay. Yeah, throw an egg wash on there too. People give white bread too much credit, man. I think. Do they? I think, yeah, you know, they, oh, it's just bread. I think uh, fried chicken is tastier than a KFC top white bread bun. I don't think I'd surprise anybody there. And I bet there's negligible, negligible health difference between them, depending on okay. what you're looking for. What do you do when you're in the chest and you have three hearts? You just beat Blue Baby without getting hit. Oh, okay. I'll do that. I gotta go through two more rooms, though. Yeah, you'll be fine. Don't eat gluten, your dick will literally fly off. I saw that episode. <laughs> it turns into a firecracker and shoots up into the what sky. What is that it's terrifying. from? It's from South Park. Oh, yeah? That's pretty funny. The it's concept like alone. it spreads Ebola and you also, your dick flies oh, off. Oh, is that a, is it a recent episode? It sounds yeah. timely. It's timely. Did you see that video of the, the guy? He was on, like, a, a flight that was coming back from, like, Cabo San Lucas or something like that and he sneezed and then you could tell he thought he was the funniest guy in the room he sneezed and said sorry I just came back from Africa and then oh no like they did I don't know if they did an emergency landing but as soon as they landed um, like people from the CDC and like full hazmat gear came on uh, came on the plane and like escorted him off and everyone was like covering their nose and stuff like that and he's like I was just making a joke yeah, and then yeah, when I he... think we would have had this already <laughs> through people's heads by now. <laughs> when he got off, he's like, "I ain't even from Africa." Yeah, it was, but there were, you know, there was some other parts of that video that were annoying, like people applauding as he got sent off. But still, I was like, "How dumb do you have to be, man?" 
it's not funny. Nobody wants to get horrible diseases. It's okay though. All right, we're done. I, I right. died, so. Well, all beats uh, Blue Baby here. I, by most accounts, I probably should have beaten that run. But you know me, no matter how fed I get, I still can't win. I have to look at this, Nick. Mm. Oh, come on. Drunken Dictator says, Oh, you have to sacrifice and admit that you are KFC's bitch. That's the ultimate <laughs> ultimate affront there, asking you to sacrifice the integrity of your finger skin. Hey, stop scrolling down. In order to shove KFC chicken grease on a sandwich into your mouth hole like KFC are your gods. I completely agree, but I I think the sandwich looks pretty tasty. So you won. I don't we don't really have KFCs. It, this is gonna sound like, oh, we don't have KFCs here, but in Vancouver there's seriously like no close KFCs. There's like some on the outskirts of the city. I don't think there's any like fried chicken in Vancouver proper except for like Korean and Japanese fried chicken. Yeah, foods. I didn't see much around. When you get out of the city a little bit, you can find, you know, like a Popeyes and the churches, and then there's more frequent KFCs. I'm, dude, I, people, KFC is probably the number one fast food restaurant that people say is gross. I don't know if it's all the wonderful childhood memories. I think it's delicious. Um, I would go to it all the time. Not all the time, because that would be dead, but, you know, now and then. What's, what's like a reasonable amount of times to go in a month? To KFC? Yeah. Right, I mean, it depends on you know, the rest of your lifestyle. No more than four times? I was thinking, like, maybe twice. But it twice. if you're not going to KFC and instead you're going to eat a whole chocolate cake, then what does it matter, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks very much to Mole Trooper for the $5 donation. I'm on holiday right now, so I have the rare chance to stay up late and catch the show live. Just wanted to say you're both amazing people, and the NLSS is my favorite thing on the internet right now. Thank you so much. That's really nice of you to say. All right. Well, thanks much for watching. Much appreciated. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, we'll be back in three minutes, and I'll get my muscle memory off. In any case, we'll be back with some C to Geo Guesser. See you there. See you in a minute. Or three. Now we'll wait for the ads to... Perk you know, I've out. never actually played Geo Guesser myself. I've really? only ever played it over people's shoulders. All right. Well, I've got some seeds that we can use here. How do I do it? Just go to geoguesser.com? Yeah, but with no second E. Okay. Why don't crabs donate to charity? Because they're shellfish. Because <laughs> they're nebulas. That's pretty good. All right, ants. They're nebulous. Hey, Chad, are you nebulous sometimes? You nebulous courses of thought? What is this shit? As soon as I stop playing Isaac, I start getting frame drops. It almost seemed like one thing triggered the other. Let's explore the world, shall we? That's what it wants me to say, anyway. Doesn't capture very well, though. Oh, there it is. They really need to get, like, a setup like a plugin or something for OBS that lets you somehow do screen regions while you have another thing being shown. So otherwise you gotta like set this all up ahead of time and you don't always know what you're gonna do ahead of time. Anyway, looks like we're good now. Uh, almost. There we go. So you're gonna have a little bit of a letterbox, I hope you don't mind too much. 
This is Arizona. This actually looks a little like Arizona. Probably Arizona. That is... There's a crossroads that we are at. This is basically the scene from Castaway with Tom Hanks, where he decides what part of his life he wants to pursue now. We found the scene from Castaway in GeoGuessr. It took us one moment. I found the scene from Castaway in GeoGuessr. Hmm? It's the crossroads where Tom Hanks decides what part of his life he wants to pursue. <laughs> Found it. Mm hmm. How do I play against you or with you? And just give it a minute here. Okay, I'm just anxious because I don't know how this whole thing works. Now well, the argument spilled out over into Twitter about the potato chips. Can I hear your best Patrick Bateman impression? I don't actually know who that is. He's the guy from American Psycho. We actually, well, occasionally I get a little bit of a Patrick Bateman thing going on when I unironically talk about things that people like, ironically. Uh-huh. I'm trying to think of an example. McMaster and James? You know okay. McMaster and James? No. Nope. Patrick Bateman is he's a sociopath, played by Christian Bale in the movie. And he talks like this all the time, and he's got a very snooty attitude, but he talks about things that people would consider superficial in a very condescending tone, maybe. Like, I, their first album was a little bit too new wave for me, but then when they came out with sports, I thought they really came into their own. You just sound like you're using a radio voice. It is my... Patrick Bateman's got a little bit of a radio voice going, for sure. All right, well... Thank you, Belligerent Bob, for the $1.68. Uh, I could try and do a radio voice, I guess, but I don't know. I'm not that good at it. <laughs> Senor Gacky just tweeted me. He said, this is like some next-level arguing. Just nuked us from orbit. Oh, Chicken no. chips are level 99 with smoky barbecue sauce. No potato wafer crisps here, baby. And then he tweeted me a picture as a bowl. With like 11 chicken fries in them. We would not call those chicken chips. Those would be chicken fries. So you've gone from chips, which should be crisps, to fries, back to chips. But we don't even consider chicken fries as like chips. Oh shit, you just blew my goddamn mind. They're like strips. They're more in the fish, uh, like the fish and chips or the fish sticks category. Strips to chips to chicken to... Wow. We're gone. We're lost, man. I want it, whatever it is. It sounds good. Also, chicken fries are delicious. I wouldn't disagree. Yeah, that. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, Nick. What do we do? Geo Guesser. I'm there. You're at the site. Yeah. All right, I'm going to give you some seeds. Well, I went to, it started a game, like, immediately. I didn't do anything. I think I'm just going to have to give you these links one by one. Okay, I'm at the site now. Right. No, no, it's okay. Click this link. Better not be porn. You know, it's probably not going to be porn. You ruined my Twitch channel. I'm be very upset with you. Well, Challenge you should, accepted. You should put an overlay on first. No, I didn't do it. You should always just put an overlay on. No, I trust you. I'm trying to. I'm gonna get started here. I Ooh, promise. Baby, a subscriber. I am Shouta. Thank you for the subscription, by the way. I appreciate it. But I'm trying to get um, chat to load, but my chat is just going like, no. You know, we're not gonna load. You're playing the same location for each round. If you're unsure how. To... Okay, so we basically just look for a place, find it on the map. You just you hold up for a second. I'll give you all the information you need, but Ooh, I need good. to get this thing to pop out so I can actually read chat because it's not showing up right now. We're in the Florida Everglades. You relax, Mister, because I don't have that set. There we guy. go. I got okay. Click the GeoGuessr link. Who's this guy over here? Challenge accepted. Who's uh, this guy about? What's his his deal? If you could just hold up a second, Nick, that would be wonderful. I want to find out more about this guy. I want to meet his dad. Peter <laughs> do do. Do -do -do -do. All the food is poison. Okay. He looks so pleased with himself eating food. You hold up a second, okay? I am holding up. This is me buying time for you. All right, I'm here. Ooh, baby, a subscriber. Truly Canadian. Thank you for the subscription. So these seeds come to us courtesy of uh, Ather Games, who has like a 3,000 part GeoGuessr Let's Play on his own channel. So these are like the, the cream of the crop. Oh, hi, Ather Games. He's here in my chat. Hello. 
All right, Nick, do you have any information? What, what are you thinking? Let's do some stream of consciousness about where we are, because we can't really move very far, I think. Like, I can go inside of this place. You can click the arrows to kind of move Dude, around. Dude, this is mist. This is this looks a lot like mist. I'll give you that. I choose U R U, and I'm gonna find the red pages right now. So okay. you can play the game. I'm gonna find the red pages. I found. You see the dude eating? Yeah, I saw the dude eating. Uh, I see a man in a boat. He uh, appears to be maybe an alien because his f his face can't be properly photographed. Um, oh shit. You're there's, right. There's yeah, some this text is some kind of men there. in black shit right here. Well, wherever we are, they either own a Nikon or they brought their own Nikon cameras with them. And there's a lot of them. There's like a big bag of cameras. So this is Dude, an I area. I can see his like name badge on top of it. Yeah, can you can you see what language it's in though? Not really, no. Yeah, when you zoom in, it doesn't It's a little too blurry. They drink Coca-Cola. Oh, well, what does the Coca-Cola can say? Everywhere this... in the goddamn world says Coca-Cola. But doesn't it, like, if, if you were in, like, uh, Thailand, it would say Coca-Cola in, like, Thai, right? It would say Coca-Cola in English. Really? English branding. If you were in the Philippines, it wouldn't be in, like, Tagalog or something. There's, oh, there's a magazine on the ground that says Africa. Really? Uh, in Encounter Africa. Well, it may not have anything to do with Africa, but that's what it says. You know, that piece of information, I think, is... Uh... That's pretty much the best thing to go on. I've been walking around a little bit here. I'm seeing this could be the savanna. Originally, I thought maybe we were in like a rainforest type area, but this looks more like it could be like a, you know, the Ooh, African baby, plains a or something. Subscriber, Senor Gaki, thank you for the subscription. That's the thing. People tweet you, then you just shout them out, and you, uh, there you go. This place is beautiful. Instant subscriptions. This is a, a wonderful place. Although I'll be honest, I would never want to sleep here on this day bed um, with the vending machine behind it. When we get teleporters, this is a place I would visit for the day. Also, this is just oh. actually missed. Did you get to the bridge level? Yes. Nick. Yeah. Dear guest, the swimming pool is used entirely at your own risk. The management oh, no. and staff <laughs> I found it. of Rain's Camp, Bina's Camp. Yeah? Yeah. Can you read that? I, I don't know where that is, but I'm at the pool right now. Look look to your left where it says, Dear Guest, No oh, Diving. I found it. Yep. Do uh, not accept. It's something camp. So they either, Rain. they either speak English here or they have predominantly English speaking guests. That does look like it says Rain's Camp. For some reason, that has me think. Rain's just sounds like super Australian to me. Injury or death, that's usually... Okay. Yeah, don't dive in there. Don't be a sucker. This thing doesn't look very deep. <laughs> it's got to say it in two places, too. It's got no edge to it. It's a really fancy pool. It's an infinity pool, although it doesn't go off to infinity because there's grass right there. I feel like... Um, the magazine said Discover Africa. I think this is in Africa, if I had to guess. Why are there just leaves all over everything? Did they just fall? Maybe there was a storm. Well, there's lots of foliage because it rains in Africa. Do the trees tell you anything about where this is? If I if I was Michael A.L. Fox, they probably would, but I'm not. Well, they have those stumpy trees in Africa, I know, but like I don't see any of those type things. Um, I feel this is... Uh, I'm going to take a guess and say Africa. We don't have to go with the same choices, by the way. Well, what part of Africa? It's, there's like a lot of areas in well, Africa. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna p pick a part of Africa that speaks English, and um, when it comes to English speaking parts of Africa, South Africa, I default to South Africa. So I'm gonna say okay. this is in Cape Town because it looks kind of like, you know, oceanic sort of. Okay, yeah, I get it. Did you guess Cape Town? Make guess. Uh, oh, we weren't that far off. Nick, that Said, was pretty uh, good. Botswana. That was pretty good. I that. like how we work together there. That was kind of neat. Yeah, that looks. There's beautiful right there. The Moremi Game Reserve in Botswana. Put it on my list of things to do. One thousand six hundred eighty-two kilometers off. How do you okay. feel about about this one, Nick? I feel like we got uh, a lot just of the... reveling in the enjoyment of that win. Okay. Okay. First of all, there's the fucking Loch Ness monster out in the middle of the ocean, so I want to cover that. Oh wait, it's like a building or a boat. Never mind. Are you sure it's not the <laughs> looked adequately dark to me for a second there? This is beautiful as hell right. too. 
This is Lee's 1989. Oh sorry, Luanli's ni- Lee 1989's Pick Your Favorite Vacation Destination Challenge. This is a, a apparently. Like I want to go on vacation here. A user submitted one. We can go in the room and look around. Oh, I got to do that. Where do you think you are uh, here, Nick? If you had to, what do you think about this water? Uh, it's very clear. It looks like not America. I can tell you that much. I I think we could all probably agree that this was not the United States of yeah. America. I don't like how this game is kind of like laggy sometimes. Well, they're pulling freaking satellite data from up in the in space. So I'm going to give them a minute. My hunch is that we're maybe in the Caribbean. Well, it's a vacation spot, right? So that could be a hint in and of itself. Re-energize your relationship. Okay, we already knew that. There's some books. There's some magazines, although I can't really read much mm. about them. They don't look like telling magazines. They look like passing time magazines. It could be like Southeast Asia. That's the problem, is the Caribbean and Southeast Asia. Mm. They both kind of, when I play GeoGuessr, they both kind of look like this to me, but they're very far away. I'm not getting much of an Asian vibe from this, personally. I could see where you could make an argument for one, but it's not feeling that way to me. The Caribbean thing felt like it was a pretty good idea. Right, let's go with the let's go with the Caribbean, Nick. Somewhere in the Caribbean. Um, you know what? What's the most decadent of all the Caribbean islands? I'd say the Caymans, right? That's where you go to. That's where you hide your money. Hmm. So I'm gonna throw down, and I'm not gonna give a reaction. Because what about Costa Rica? Go for it. I don't really know how to tell the difference, but for some reason, when I saw that, I was like, "That might be a thing." You should choose a uh, choose a guess. How close were you? Uh, have you guessed? Yeah. All right. Then we were both pretty far away. I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. Very uh, very far away. I was uh, sixteen thousand kilometers away. What is this even? This is uh, the ocean. <laughs> That's what the Indian Ocean looks like. Okay. That was the Indian Ocean, Nick. That was not a not a good one, in off my the, opinion. Off the coast of India. Okay. Okay. Well, that's over now. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this is This is Japan. an Asian place. This is, I can tell you this that. is Japan. I would. Oh, no, this is absolutely Japan, yeah. All right. Nishinomaru. That is, uh, that's like a Tori right there. I know that because I've played a bunch of one, or not one, versus a hundred uh, Master of the Grid. What do you say we take a little walk? Wait, um, where do you see a Tory gate? Um, I thought it was like the first thing that I saw when I came in. It wasn't. It was a like a palace shaped like a Tory or a, a shrine. Oh, geez, what have I done here? Shaped like a Tory. Like a Tory, hey. <laughs> it's like British guards, aren't they? Spelled a little differently, though. Ooh, baby, a map. That's not helpful at all. Oh, Himeji Castle. It's the Maldives, Nick. It's an awesome island country. Oh, okay. It's the Maldives. Mald- Maldives, yeah. We're at we're at Himeji Castle. Do you know where that is in Japan? I may have heard the name before, but no, I don't. I didn't really tell you much. Maybe we can zoom in to like a one-tenth scale and then just take three hours and pan slowly across each city well, you know japan's not that big it's fairly true i don't think i don't know if we're gonna find anything that tells us the city i don't want to look at chat by the way because i'm pretty sure that chat knows chat always knows but like like for real now I'm pretty sure if I looked at chat, I would just see that it's like, oh, it's in Tokyo, or something like that. Not getting a huge Tokyo vibe from this. You gonna pop down and guess? I think I'm ready to pop down and guess. I just found a sign I want to look at real fast. Entrance. It's in a very northern Japanese town called Entrance. <laughs> <laughs> Fragili. Must be Italian. Oh, yeah. Thanks for etching your uh, text into an iron block. It makes it really easy for the Google cameras to pick up you. Dude, it's... there's a city called Himeji. Really? <laughs> yeah. Where is it? 
It's uh, central ish, central south. What actually, is, what is it close to? Okayama. Oh yeah, okay. Or Kobe. Tell you what, I'm gonna guess right there. I would suggest you do the same. What? No, I mean I, I already guessed. Oh, okay, cool. I was giving you the answer because I thought you already guessed. How far away were you? Uh, I guessed uh, Matsue, and I was 166 kilometers. Oh. So you know, in the scheme of things, not that That's far off. But... I was uh, 3.5 kilometers away. Okay, <laughs> which means I didn't click exactly on the city center. I guess. All right, Nick. I gotta say, this shit is a little bit more my jam. This is South American, yes. Uh, I don't know. I was kind of getting like a European vibe. Like this could be Italy or something, oh, really? or or Sicily. Like this, this looks Mediterranean okay. as hell to me. Hmm. By the way, when you said there's a hegemony in Japan, I thought you had found that of your own volition. No, I, it was a misunderstanding. And now, chat's, oh, chat's accusing me of having cheated. Chat, chill. It was just a misunderstanding. Also, this doesn't matter at all. <laughs> Uh, this is possibly Russian. Wait, what is this language? I see a sign that says Hotel Malvasia. This looks like Russian cursive to me. Look for the one that says uh, roof garden and we also serve on the terrace because there's <laughs> some... I don't know how to describe how to get there. I guess I could return to start and then find the arrow. I'll tell you what. This what? I would. My heart does not say Russia on this one. No, I'm not saying it's Russia, but it looks like Russian. Maybe this could be on like the Black Sea. That's not that far away from what I'm guessing All here. I'm really feeling like this is either Greece or Italy or it's somewhere in that region. You know, it could be like North Africa or Corsica, or Mallorca, or something like that. Chat, not trying to be a dick, but, like, just telling me the answer doesn't help anyone. <laughs> yeah, guesses are fine, but when you're like, it's this because of this, it's like, ah. Uh, makes it so we can't look at chat. Which or making be- fun of me for making stupid decisions, because, like, I I don't know. <laughs> you got, yeah, everyone's got to learn. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going back and forth here between, like, uh, what is that, Crete's and like one of the islands off the coast of Italy. This might be one where we differ though. I would encourage you to make your own guess if you're uh if you're interested. To me, I think this looks a little bit slightly more northern. Slightly more northern. If it was Greece, I'd expect a little bit more, you know, that white clay stuff. Mm-hmm. Expect the water to be maybe a little bit of a more turquoise-ish. I've never been, I'm I'm just saying. Uh so I'm going to guess that this is uh Cagliari on, uh, I think that's Sardinia. I'm in a bad position here because I don't know enough to even make an educated guess, really, so I'll say it's part of somewhere in Italy. Say it's uh, Lecce. Eh, Not that far off, actually. Not too bad, not too bad. 587. I wonder if the language you saw, it must have been Greek then. Yeah. Okay. At first I was like, it's probably Turkish. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Oh, this is impossible. Um, my gut says Hawaii. Well, yeah, there's islands everywhere, but that could be a few places. You know what makes me think Hawaii, though? The grill. Yeah, you pretty much got it. I'm trying to think, where where have I seen a barbecue like that? Oh, right, every house <gasps> in North America. And the only place this could be in North America is Hawaii, as far as I'm aware. Look at the hat on the guy in the silhouette reflected on the uh, oven. <laughs> that tells you a lot, actually. Oh, man. Yeah, that's... Um, this could be Hawaii. That could be Hawaii. That could be Curious George's handler right there. <laughs> I I can't imagine that I would find information here that would, that would sway me. So I'm just going to go for Hawaii. Which is not in Japan, as I have just scrolled in on. There we go. So I'm just going to say that this is in, like, uh, you know, Maui, Honolulu. How do you feel about that one, Nick? 
Could work. It's up to you. You can take another second if you want to. You know, we hardly even looked around, though. I'm Although not... it looks like we don't really get a lot of latitude here. It's just kind of walk around this dude's house. Yeah, I, I possess some inf insider information. Here's what I'm going to say. Don't pick Hawaii, but maybe go all in on the hat thing. Where else would you find a hat like that? I never seen a hat like that. Ooh, baby, a subscriber. Reaper Razzle. New Zealand. Thank you for the subscription. Well, if you if you want to, you should go for the guests. <laughs> oh, it was Australia. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you're much much closer. Terribly, there. terribly far off. All right. Well, the first or the second one was terrible. The one that we thought was in the Caribbean is actually in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Or the Arabian Sea, my apologies. You came out with an even 10,000. You did? No, you did. No, I got... Uh, the, this doesn't... It's not comparing oh. us. It's comparing who gave the challenge. Okay, well, I got 8,960 or 86 out of a 10,000. All right, this is the Big Cities Challenge. Neo Sylvanus Big Cities Challenge. This one, I'm excited. We should have a lot of contextual clues here for this one. All right. All right, have you loaded yours up? Just did. All right, let's 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 get worldly, Nick. Right off the bat, I'm thinking this is, uh, this is like the Netherlands. Somewhere in Europe. Canals. I definitely get Europe, yeah. Canals. Ooh, this is Germany, maybe. This parking sign underneath it, it has a uh, text sign that says Friedrichstadt or Friedrichstadt. So yeah, this, that's that's German. This must be Germany. It's Frederick Street. Or a country that speaks German. I, I did see some BMWs around too. You know, every German citizen <laughs> gets a BMW or a Volkswagen. Berlin City Tour. Oh, you saw you found something that says Berlin City Tour? Yes, yes, I have. Found Tell you that. what, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a guess that this is Berlin. I'm going to make sure I, I get it. I'm going to go for Berlin. Right on that dot in make the city guess. center. All right. Oh, you know what? There's like a canal, like right freaking there, man. I was 1.5 kilometers off because I didn't click close enough to the dot. I clicked on the canal <laughs> and I got 0 0.839. I could see myself. <laughs> if I if I had put that dot down, okay, that was really good. Uh, do you see this weird like the way the picture got sewn together? This really tiny car that has like a blue headlight and a red oh, taillight. Yeah. That's really weird. <laughs> beep, beep. Uh, okay, it's not even a clown car. That's something else entirely. Well, there's Mathis uh, wearing his American oh American Eagle, Eagle man. Yeah. So far, I can't garner Is a whole a bunch. Head covering. Yeah, that could kind. be anywhere though. Could be. Do we literally have nowhere we can click on? Oh man, that's gonna be tough. All right. So in these situations, you can you can draw some contextual clues, right? Okay. What do you think uh, about these cars? You think you see anything te well, they're, telling? Well, they're European small. I would agree that this is not North America, and I would I would probably be thinking Europe myself. The trees also aren't really super American. Right. And what kind of trees do we have? We got some like. Uh, some palmy looking almost. things. Yeah, so we're not in northern Europe. I'm not totally convinced we are even in Europe, by the way. But uh, and we've got kind of like I don't want to offend anybody, but even though we've got yachts here, it kind of looks like a little bit undeveloped. Look at the license plate. Can you make out what's going on with that? No. It's too blurry, right? Yeah. And I don't want to put too much stake in the head covering. Nor do I. Uh, there aren't enough people to really draw any conclusions. Exactly. It could be anywhere. What about this building in the back? There's a oh, oh there's an ad for a car. There's I also, see the word art. I was gonna say there's a sign that just says Ooh, art. Oh baby, a subscriber. <laughs> Porcupine cheese. Thank you for the subscription. Also, porcupine cheese. Thank you for the subscription. Good timing. You nailed us both at the same time. It's a rare feat. <laughs> Nick, if you look across the street, 
I see yeah. another individual with a head covering. Oh, do you? Okay, I didn't see that. So I'm starting to oh, think... Yeah. Starting to think that maybe we are... And if you look around, there's a lot of dark hair. There's not a lot of like yeah. hair diversity going on right now. For sure. I see that too, yep. So oh. I, I, would, I would go so but, far as to say that we might be somewhere on the Arabian Peninsula. You all right there? Yeah, I just the whole thing just turned blue for a second, oh, but okay. it's okay now. Um, 